Welcome. In a previous video, we discussed a winning strategy. In this video, we're going to expand upon the idea of the winning strategy and learn some tools to help us discover how to find a winning strategy. So the main tool that we're going to discuss in this video is a state diagram. So state diagram represents every position of the game somehow in some maybe clever way of writing out a diagram that represents each position. And if we draw an arrow or possibly a line from one position to another, it's a possible move during the gameplay. Now often when we're you know, playing out different situations, drawing every single position to make the, uh, you know, a complete state diagram is maybe you know, too cumbersome or impossible. So sometimes we just draw part of it, but we'll start with this definition of a state diagram. Okay, so within the state diagram, there's hot and cold positions. So in a cold position, the player whose turn it is to move will lose with best play. So if you're ready to move and you're sitting upon a cold position, you're staring at the game and it's in a cold position, even if you play the best that you can possibly play, you might still end up losing the game. Well, in a hot position, the player whose turn it is to move will win with best play. So you have a winning strategy if you're playing the game, you're ready to move and you're staring at a hot position. So in a state diagram, a cold position will be indicated with a letter C or a box. Or sometimes we use a color code if you have you know, blue and, and red, maybe blue is nice for cold and red is nice for hot. So the hot positions will be indicated with a letter H or a circle. So boxes or, or blue boxes or C's for, for cold and hot is H and, and circles and red. Moving from a hot position to a cold position is indicated with a W. So how do we find a cold position? So the way to find a cold position is that if every way of playing from a particular position, so we're saying, okay, we're some position in the game here, and you could play along these arrows to other positions in the game, and somehow you've discovered that every way, dot, 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 all of these positions, every one of those ways of playing puts you into a hot position. Then you've discovered that this position that you have up here, this P, is cold. So all of these hots down here make you conclude that P is cold. Okay, how do we find a hot position? So if you're searching for a hot position and you found a bunch of positions, maybe you found some hot, some cold, it doesn't matter really what the rest of it is, if you find one single cold position, you can ignore the rest of it. That means that the position that plays into it is hot. So we're going to put a red you know, circle around that position. That's how we discover that we have a hot position. And notice that this is not a checkering pattern that's forming. It's something deeper than that. So yes, hot positions do play into cold positions, but you can also play from a hot position to a hot position. So it doesn't just alternate hot and cold. If every way of playing out of a position is hot, then you get a cold position. If one way of playing from a position is cold, then you get a hot position. All right, so let's look at three possible scenarios that can show up in a state diagram. So you could be doing a winning move, which would be following a winning strategy. It'd be one move of the winning strategy when you play from hot to cold. And you can indicate that with a W over top of it if you like. So you'd be happy about making that type of move. Okay, now a, a losing move or a move that you, you really didn't have a choice of, but had to play anyway, you're in a cold position the only choice from cold positions are to play into hot positions. So you're not going to win the game from there. So maybe you're 
um, you know, sort of content about this position. And the final way of possibly playing within a state diagram is from a hot position to a hot position. If you did this, you would really not want to make that choice. It means that you could have played from a hot position and done a winning move, but instead you made a mistake and you played into another hot position so your opponent could win from this hot position. So if I was in this scenario, I would be kind of unhappy because I gave up a win that I could have had. Okay, so moving forward, there is no way that a cold position will ever show up next to a cold position in a state diagram. Or in other words, it's not possible to play from cold to cold. This uh, you know, sort of violates the definition of what it means to be a cold position. From a cold position, every way of playing is supposed to be hot. So it doesn't make any sense for a cold position to play into another cold position. So we're just going to take out our red pen here and, and put an X over top of that. Let's look at some examples. Okay, so the next game that we're going to talk about here is called the matchstick game. So starting at the end of a state diagram is often very helpful and working backwards to try to find hot and cold positions seems to be a very good tool to trying to figure out the winning strategy and often our question about you know, who can always win a game. So we're going to apply that to the matchstick game. So we have a pile of 11 matchsticks. So there's 11 objects in front of you. And two players alternate, taking either one or two sticks. And the player that removes the last stick is the winner. Just as an aside, when we remove a last object as a winner, this is called a NIM game. Later on down the line, there'll be another video discussing NIM games. So really, the matchstick game is an example of a NIM-style game. And remember how I was saying within state diagrams, it's nice to you know, try to find a creative way of uh, you know, labeling your positions? So maybe rather than drawing like one, two, three, four, five, a whole bunch of you know, objects of 11 matchsticks in front of you, how about we just label that with the number 11? Represents a pile that contains 11. So our job is to figure out, well, is 11 a, a hot position or a cold position? So we're going to use what we just learned about hot and cold positions and assigning them. And the hint here tells us working backwards, so going to the end of the diagram and working backwards is very helpful. So let's do that. So notice in the diagram, the lines show up whenever you take two. And of course, the taking is in the downward direction, making the number smaller. And the regular arrows here are taking one. Every turn, you have a choice of taking two or taking one. So starting at the very end of the diagram, if you have zero, if you're looking at zero matchsticks and your opponent has just gone and now it's your turn, the game is over, you've lost, there's nothing you can do to win from there. Now that we've found a cold position, each position that plays into it is hot. Okay, now let's analyze position three. So position three, every way of playing, playing taking one or taking two, ends up in a hot position. So the key word there is every, every way of playing from three ends up in a hot position. That's what makes us a cold position. So three is cold. So if you're playing into a cold position from five or four, those positions become hot. Now every way of playing from six is hot. So six is cold. Now playing from eight and seven into six, a cold position, make eight and seven hot. Every way of playing from nine is hot, so nine is cold. And then finally, 11 and 10 are hot because they each play into a cold position, which is nine. 
So we've discovered that 11 is a hot position. That's the key position to figure out. There's a winning strategy from 11. Namely, you just keep playing into cold positions. And we can state that the first player always wins. And notice we're careful with our language when we write this down. We're not saying that the first player will always win. We're saying that they can always win. The first player could still make a mistake and you know, play into 10 and end up losing the game. It's just that they can always win by following the winning strategy. Okay, so there's one more example for you to try. We're going to try another version of the matchstick game. We're going to call this the matchstick ungame, and we'll think about why it might be called that later on. Again, there's 11 matchsticks, but this time we're going to change the rules around slightly. You can remove one or three. In the last version, it was one or two. So the player that removes the last stick again is the winner. And I want you to try this on your own. Try to label each position below as hot or cold. Then we'll analyze this a little bit more. We'll state the player that can always win. And we'll ask, well, what if we started with 222 matchsticks? Maybe we'll try to notice a pattern. And then we playfully called this an ungame. So we'll discuss that as well. So give this a try now. Try this question on your own. Okay, so let's start by labeling some hot and cold positions, and again, working from the end of the diagram. So if you're at zero, that means that it's game over and you've lost the game if you're staring at zero and it's your turn. So from there, we'll work backwards along those arrows. So backwards along that arrow and backwards along that arrow. Each of those positions become hot positions. So one is hot and three is hot. Next, let's look at position two. So if we look at position two, every way of possibly playing from position two is a hot position. There's only one way to play from position two, but it certainly is playing into a hot position. So every way of playing is hot makes two cold. As soon as we discover that two is a cold position, let's work backwards along that arrow and say, okay, five is now a hot position because it plays into that cold position. And then working sequentially, how about we look at position four next. From position four, it plays into a hot, and the other way of playing plays into a hot as well. That makes position four cold. So next up, we can work backwards along the arrow of four and go back to seven. That means that seven is hot. Now we'll look at six next. So from six, we play into either three, which is hot, or five, which is hot. That makes six cold. Now that we've discovered that six is cold, we'll work backwards along that arrow. Well, we've already labeled seven. We'll work backwards along that arrow. We can now label nine as hot. So maybe next up, we'll analyze eight. So for position eight, it plays into five and seven, both of which are hot, making eight cold. And then finally, we can work backwards along the arrows for eight, all the way back to 11, making that 11th position hot. And for completeness, let's look at position 10. It only plays into hot positions, so that one's cold. So our diagram is complete, and now we've discovered that the first player can always win because 11 is a hot position. Also, what if we started with 222 matchsticks? Can we notice a pattern that's going on below in this diagram? Notice that the structure of these lines repeats in this pattern of four. If we just move over you know, one column to the left, if we were to draw another one over here, all the lines would be positioned in the exact same way and it would produce all the same hot and cold positions by this pattern that's forming. So there's a pattern of four occurring, and if we look a little bit deeper, there's also a pattern of, of two, because it goes zero, one, two, three in each of these columns that are here. Or in other words, a simple way to state this pattern is an odd and even pattern. Odd is hot and even is cold. So with 222 matchsticks. If we kept going and going up to that number, 
222 is an even number, so that position is cold. So this means that with 222 matchsticks, the second player can always win the game. Okay, so there's one more question to think about here. Why did we call this an ungame? So it's playfully called an ungame. In this particular game, if you look closely, there is no way to play from hot to hot. There are no options of that sort. So in most games, there is mistakes that you can make. This is kind of like an ungame or even a no strategy game. If you start at 11, you will always win. There is no way that you can screw it up and end up losing. If you're on a hot position, you will always stay on hot positions on your turn as you go through the game. So maybe we can uh, touch up this last little sentence that we wrote down here. If the game starts with 222 matchsticks, the second player not can, usually it's can, but this time it's not can, the second player will always win or the second player always wins. So there was also a pattern that occurred with the game that we looked at before. Let's just scroll back up and look at that pattern that occurred. If we look closely, all of these cold positions are multiples of three. Often patterns are easier to notice if you look at cold positions because most games have less cold positions showing up than hot positions. So if you're at a bar and you wanna win some money and you throw some matchsticks down on the countertop and you say, you know, we're gonna play this game and you wanna know if you can you know, win or not, well, there's a very straightforward strategy. Just on your turn, always leave your opponent with a multiple of three and you'll be the winner at the end that either takes two to win or takes one to win. Now, after you win too many drinks playing that game, then you might wanna switch over to this game where you don't have to think at all anymore and you can just make sure that you start on an odd number and then you'll win even more drinks. So thanks so much for listening. Thanks for checking out the video. We'll see you on the next one.